So the other day, I was having a relaxing hot bath until the tap handle broke off when I was trying to turn off the water. Then it wasn't so relaxing. As it happened, the very same day, I got a 3D printer delivered to my door. And I have no idea how to use it because I've never used a 3D printer in my life. So it wasn't hard to figure out that my first 3D printing project should be a replacement tap handle. But one that was way cooler and steampunk and amazing. I want to say a huge thanks to MakeBlock for sending me the mCreate 3D printer to try out. It took about 15 minutes to assemble with one electrical clippy inny thing, four long bolts, and three thumb screws. Too easy. I turned it on, decided to speak English, and waited a few seconds while it magically leveled itself. With magic. I loaded up some PLA filament, and then realized I had no idea how to make anything in 3D. So I went upstairs to learn. I decided to use Tinkercad, which is a free web-based 3D design program. It's simple enough that I could just sit down with pretty much no experience and design a 3D version of my Lost Wax logo. The way it works is you've got a bunch of different shapes on the sidebar to choose from, and you can either add or subtract shapes together to make new, more awesome shapes. You can scale the shapes on any of the three axes, you can duplicate shapes, you can align them with each other, rotate them any direction you want, and just have fun. Bring in some text, smack it on your project, add some more text, jam it into your project, turn it into a hole, and group everything together to make the hole into a real hole. I exported my logo as an STL file, and then imported that into Cura slicing software which is going to tell my 3D printer where to go and what to do. I left all the settings at the default for the mCreate printer, pressed slice, and then saved that file to my little USB drive. Plug it in, press print, and have a cup of tea for 41 minutes. Or just gather around the printer with your family. Why is it printing out? It's printing out of things that says lost wax. You should sometimes print out like... A bee's legs. A bee's legs? Yeah, so what? that I, my bee can have legs. Ah. Or like her feet. bee that has a body that without legs. Ah. Poor bee doesn't have legs. How long is this going to take? Uh, oh, wow. 23 more minutes. 17 minutes. Why don't we go do something else until it's done? Yeah. That's a good idea. I was super happy with how that turned out, but before moving on to my awesome tap handle project, I thought I'd try out another feature of the mCreate, which is the fact that you can remove the 3D print head and replace it with a laser head. Which is incredibly handy if you're in the middle of a bookmark shortage and happen to have some spare leather lying around. Or if someone at work steals your banana every day and you need to protect your lunch. Well, that was a lot of fun, but now it's time to get on to the tap handle project. I did some fancy measuring, followed by some fancy drawing, so I could make a piece that would fit over that little brass knobby thing so I could turn on my tap. This is the one piece that I needed to be dimensionally accurate. After that, I could pretty much make up whatever I wanted for the rest of the tap handle. I printed it out and then gave it a try. I'm about to try this out and see if it works. It looks like <laughs> I made this part slightly too small. Ah. All right, I have to do this again. Super close. So what do you think? It needs like 0.1 millimeters bigger in the center or something. Then it'll work perfect. Oh, and I forgot to put, make the hole go through the back. And my socks are wet. <laughs> So I'm getting out of the bathtub. I got a bit smarter the second time and just printed out the little piece that I needed to test to see if it would fit. That way instead of being a 5 hour print, it was like 10 minutes. Now I had the design for my tap turning part, but I came across a bit of a problem. PLA, the plastic I was printing with, starts to get soft at quite a low temperature. And that copper shaft in the tap gets really pretty hot when the hot water's on. I found out there's another type of filament called PETG, which is stable to a higher temperature, so I ordered a roll of that, and continued on with the handle design. I wanted some sweet swirly designs raised up around the outside perimeter of the handle, so I spent a couple of days, as well as a fair bit of frustration, designing that in Tinkercad. I cut a little chunk of that design and printed it out. 
The top half of the curve printed great, but on the underside the details weren't quite as clean as I wanted them. And that's because when you're printing at too shallow of an angle, the printer is basically trying to just lay filament down on thin air, and that doesn't work. So I came up with another idea, a way to use PLA's low distortion temperature for good instead of evil. If I printed my swirly strip flat, and then heated it up enough to soften, I might be able to form it around the tap handle. So I did a little test run on that theory using one of my daughter's toys. And some hot water. I could see there was definite potential of this working, though I would have to refine my technique a bit, because the plastic cooled down a bit too quickly once it was out of the water. Anyways, I figured I could get it to work, so I continued on the design of the tap handle, making sure to include the optimum percentage of swirly bits. To avoid having to print anything on the underside, I split the handle in half. The two halves printed out perfectly on the first try, and the backs came out so nice and flat there was almost no seam when I glued them together. I applied super glue gel all around one of the backs and then held the two halves together until it cured. To cover up the screw that goes through the center of the tap handle, I made a cute little cap that friction fits in place. As you can see, I ended up making quite a few of these because I just couldn't get the wording as clear as I wanted. I ended up making a recessed area and printing the words out flat, then I could glue them in place and they looked amazing. I figured I might as well replace the back plate too, so I scanned it into my computer and traced all the important bits. I brought the important bits into Tinkercad and designed the rest around that. I let the make block M create do its thing, and then I did my thing, which was sanding. From what I had read about 3D printing, I was expecting the sanding to take a lot longer than it actually did. I used wet dry sandpaper with some water to keep the dust down and to keep the plastic from heating up too much. I started off with 80 grit paper and went down to, I don't know, maybe 150? By the time I was done sanding, my new PETG plastic had come. I do need to make a disclaimer here that nowhere in the instructions does it say that the M-Create actually works with PETG, so I might be doing something I really shouldn't be doing. But I did. I covered my build surface with blue painter's tape, cause that's what the internet said to do, and started printing. The piece you see here is part of the mold I'm going to be using to form the swirly bit around the handle. I'm going to submerge it in hot water so it needs to be able to handle the temperature. As you can see, the PETG wasn't as easy to print as the PLA, and I was starting to get a little discouraged by my lack of success. I was printing in the basement, in weather like this, so it was a bit cool down there. I brought in a heater, cranked it to 30 degrees Celsius, and I was able to get some workable prints. Definitely not perfect, but they do the job for what I need. And what I needed was to bend some swirly things. Okay, now I gotta see if I can smush this into here with this smush and make it perfect. Is it gonna work? Probably not. While the water was heating, I made my own high-tech waterproof insulated gloves. They actually worked really well to protect my hands from the 70 degrees Celsius water they were about to go swimming in. I will say though, not the easiest to put on and take off. I found it worked best to submerge one half of the forming die under the water. This way it kept the swirly strip nice and pliable the entire time I was forming it. First I would use my fingers to start to press the plastic into the die. The thing I found incredibly amazing is how pliable the plastic is at 70 degrees and yet it still keeps its basic shape. It's just very cool. Once I had it basically jammed in there with my hands, I used the other half of the die to really press it into shape and to hold it there while I took it out of the water to let it cool. Once half of the strip was done, I flipped it around and did the other half. Something to remember is if that curved strip gets hot again, it will revert back to its original flat state. And then you gotta start over. But if you happen to have the right mixture of luck and skill, it'll come out fantastic. Once they were shaped properly, the strips were easy to glue on with some super glue. If there were parts that missed out on the first gluing, I would go back, squeeze a little glue beside it, work it underneath, and then hold it down. I made three strips of swirls, but I really only needed two and three quarters. So I trimmed the last one down on both ends, and it fit in really nice. I sanded the PETG connector piece so the glue would stick to it well. Then I figured out how I wanted to line it up, and marked it. I mixed up some two-part epoxy, applied it liberally, and smushed the two pieces together. Once the epoxy was cured, I got out my favorite color of paint and went to town. Now, rather than painting this, I really should have just printed it all in black plastic, except for that black's hard to see on the video, so that's why I did it in gray. Just for you. I got out my DecoArt vintage brass metallic paint, blopped a glob on a piece of paper, 
and use my gloved finger to apply a very small amount at a time over top of the black, rubbing it in perfectly. This is probably the most important part of the whole build to make it look cool, so it's definitely worth taking your time. I did also give it a clear coat to protect it from the elements. Then all I had to do was screw it in and turn it on. Ah, just right. Well, there it is, my first finished 3D project, and it looks awesome. I was really impressed with how this turned out, especially considering I was starting at like zero. I had to learn how to use the 3D programs to make the 3D thing, and then also I didn't know anything about 3D printing either. And again, a huge thanks to MakeBlock for sending me the mCreate to try out. I just loved it, and you could ask my family because they got pretty sick of me saying, oh, I could just 3D print that. I'm not sure how many of you have 3D printers, but if you do, this is kind of a cool thing to make. Um, more than just as a bathtub knob, like you could have it as a decorative knob somewhere. If you're making a cool steampunk door or like put it on your fridge and make it look like a safe. I don't know. I think this has really opened my eyes to a whole bunch of new possibilities in making stuff. Um, I've used a lot of foam in the past and although it's amazing and awesome, it still has its limitations. And I think something like this can step in in places that foam just wouldn't cut it. Like you can't have a foam handle for anything because it's foam. I'm not totally sure how this is gonna stand up over time in the shower, but I'll let you know and uh, we'll see. No guarantees. If you decide to make this for yourself, do it so at your own risk, because I don't know, you might try to turn off the tap one day and it just breaks and then the water's going and it's filling up the bath and you're freaking out and you don't think that you could just pull the plug and then the water overflows and then you have to replace your bathroom. That's not my fault. I'm not sure how many of you have 3D printers or have access to them, but I will make the file available for purchase on my website. I'll put a link up here somewhere. Hey, let me know in the comments if you would appreciate more 3D printed things, or if you'd rather I just went back to making stuff out of foam. And that's it. Done. Thanks for watching. See ya. Little steering wheel. Driving your little car.